Well, hi there. Welcome to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stromer. And we love to improve your home and improve your life. And I don't know, are you a fan of ketchup? Are you a I ketchup? I use ketchup on everything. I you use it on eggs. You I do use that? It, yes, I do every, everything. I love it so much. You love ketchup? Yeah. So my husband is... He claims to be a ketchup aficionado, where like if it isn't Heinz, he can well, tell the difference. Well, I, I would tend to agree with him. I would be able to tell the difference, too. Really? Yeah. Some of the lesser known products out there, <laughs> I don't think have the same robust flavor. Oh, I, I see. I think Heinz has got it going on. That's my ketchup of choice. Uh-huh. Not that I'm being paid by this company or no. anything, but I just do love the Heinz. Well, so... But, and, and I will say I've had homemade ketchups okay. in restaurants... That you that like? That I feel are even better than Heinz. Okay, so that's what I thought we'd talk about, because there's a bunch of things out there that you can make and now save money, or at least save yourself the hassle, just the enjoyment of knowing you made it yourself. Yeah, like or, or monitor the ingredients and know yeah. that oh, you don't have you things that are toxic, potentially. Right, or you know sugar I mean? or salt yeah. or all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, when you look at the labels, I mean, it's packed with sugar and salt. Especially and cosmetic things. stuff, too. You know, you, you think about making your own soaps or shampoos, you know how mm-hmm. much how much chemicals are on those things that go right into your scalp. And how right? expensive those things I are. Know. When I go to the drugstore, I find that I spend easily $100. And I'm saying, what? No meat? I got a tiny little... I got yeah, shampoo I got, and sunscreen. And a tiny little jar of something <laughs> that's supposed to make me look 10 years younger. Forget about and it. That, and that's all you got? When you could use a bottle of coconut oil. So let's, so let's talk about things that we can make, all this kind of stuff, homemade products that we use around the house anyway, like ketchup. Now, you said you have made your own ketchup. Is that right? I've never made you ketchup, no. But you've eaten homemade ketchup. I've eaten ketchup. homemade ketchup in fine restaurants. Okay. And, I, and listen, on a good... French fry, there's nothing better. All right. Yeah. Because it probably could be thicker, too. Not as runny, maybe, huh? Well, that's true. And also, you're going to... Yeah, that's exactly right. Because it doesn't have to pass the test of, and be, you know, be boiled mm-hmm. so that it doesn't have any bacteria potentially in it's it. It's almost more like a, a like paste. A, well, it's like a marinara. Like a marinara. And you yes. and you rock at the marinara. No, I do. So let's talk you through. Like, I mean, it's kind of basic. We'll put this on the website. But think of, like making a marinara, you got your tomato paste, sure. right? Yeah. You got you have to little have to have a little tart the cider vinegar, and then your seasonings of mustard and cum- cumin so it and is, oregano. So the secret is red, si- red, it's apple cider vinegar. Is that what does the it? The cider vinegar. I think so, because the cider vinegar has a little sweet and a little tart, you know? You could Boy, try that's different. That's exactly right. You could try different and then, vinegars. Have you, have you done your own, like, tater tots before? No, have you? Oh. Really? Yeah. You know, you can just use the Yukon Golds, cut them in half, and then fry them in a little bit of olive oil and salt. And Ooh. and pretty much, as you know, mm. oil and salt or butter and salt makes pretty much anything. You could eat hay fried in butter and well, salt, yeah. and it would be good. <laughs> You know. But the idea of making this ketchup, whether you know you want to make your potatoes or not, or whatever you like to dunk in the ketchup, yeah. I love the idea, too, of mixing it up, and you could almost have like a variety, like you would have a variety of salsas. You could have your balsamic ketchup. Sure. You could have your cranberry balsamic ketchup. You could have Worcestershire ketchup, and then your old school. Basic and, tomato, and that's not that would be a bad thing to do at a party, would it? Where kind you of had a little little placard that said, you know, Cindy's fancy. Red wine vinegar ketchup, yeah. Cindy's fancy cumin, right, you know, you right. got all these different flavors to it, that'd be nice. And then you have like little I, you sliders. Know what I call, you know, having just returned from the Great South, Memphis, Tennessee, we call that, notice how I say we, because now I'm an honorary <laughs> Southern person, we call that <laughs> dipping sauce. Hot dipping sauce. <laughs> Hot dippity dog. <laughs> all right, well, some other things that you could make. So ketchup, done. We'll try that. Yeah. What about toothpaste? Would you ever make your own toothpaste? You know, I would. You and would? I'll tell you why. Because I'm not a firm believer in fluoride. I think fluoride's bad news. Mm-hmm. They, they've they been selling it for 100 years as, as a good thing to help with decay. Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty... It's it's a bi, The byproduct fluoride is actually toxic. Mm. So I, I would prefer to have things that don't have fluoride in it. There you go. So okay. now you can own and know what's going into your body. There you go. So the ingredients are coconut oil. We love coconut I oil. Know, listen, they say gargle with coconut oil for a minute every night and all the bacteria is gone and you kill everything in your mouth. And you won't get sick. And you don't get the... You know, you know how sometimes those those Listerines and those other kinds yeah. of mouthwashes yeah. have that really almost it's burning yes. feeling. Yes, it's almost like gasoline. I don't think that sensation. can be that good. It may not be good. I, can't, I don't think it's good. It takes all the the interior, the good bacteria that's in your mouth, and I think it kills everything. And the other ingredient is in the, this toothpaste is something that my dad would always do. Talk yeah. about old school. This is kind of like World War II mentality. Is he would always brush his teeth with, you know, store-bought toothpaste, but yeah. then he'd keep some baking soda. That's and he'd right. make a little paste, and it, he swore by it that it would keep his gums really healthy and whiten the teeth. And right? I got, well, I got 
I got a couple of words for you. What's that? Lucky Chucky's Chuck- teeth. <laughs> Take a look at them in the photo. Look they at the sparkle. picture. I got a picture of them right here. I know. It's like, look at those things. They're like a, <laughs> like a, cu- a cartoon <laughs> handsome guy. Kind of. Yeah. So, so it's coconut oil, baking soda, yeah. peppermint oil to give you your little flavor. That's got your tang and your, your you get disinfectant. Your, you got your stevia, which is that, you know, it's the plant. The Sweet, sweetens sweeter. it up a bit. Yeah. And then here's the thing is that glycerin. You can get vegetable glycerin and... One time I was trying to make something for, well, I know what I was using it for. I was making mason jar snow globes and I needed glycerin because that's one of the ingredients. Because that suspends the That suspends flakes the flakes. And, yeah. But it's sometimes hard to find glycerin, but you can find it in the grocery store. You can find it in the baking section. You can find it in some of the arts and crafts store. But just heads up, you know, if you're going to do this, you might have to make a couple stops. Now, is all glycerin... I mean, you can human edible. beings. Is that, yeah, is it yeah, edible? Thank exactly. you. That's the word yeah, I was yeah, looking yeah. for. Okay. So basically, we'll put this online again, but just imagine you're mashing together baking soda, coconut oil, and then peppermint oil, or you could come up with some other flavor. Heck, I vanilla. might even spread that on toast. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> and then stevia, and then a little bit of the, the glycerin, just I two teaspoons. I think the good rule of thumb is if you can eat the stuff, you're pretty much rest, you can rest assured it's healthy for you. I don't think you can eat toothpaste. I don't think it's a good idea. But Probably, this Well, looks kids like always try, right? This, Remember you could, you know, you're, you're yeah. good to go. I remember as a kid, I try, you always tried to eat something. Did you ever try to eat a, a I, dog biscuit? I used to eat paste. Okay, you'd eat the you'd Remember eat the paste, paste in the school? No. Oh, the, 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 the crafting yes. paste. Ew. That ew. was tasty. I still ah. eat it occasionally ew. on artichokes. <laughs> Because it's got that, that thickening. Just takes me back to when I used to hide behind the piano in Miss Cohen's class because I didn't know my times tables. Oh, oh. I know. That's because you're so smart and she just didn't give you... Well, no, it's actually not. It's oh, because okay. I have no idea how to do multiplication. Anyway, let's oh, move on. Oh, well, moving on. Back to home improvement stuff. Anyway, how about homemade deodorant? Would you do that? I mean, yes, it's... that too I would do. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Aluminum uh, that's in the, a lot of deodorants. Chemicals, yeah. Bad aluminum. news. All right. Well, and plus, some people are allergic to the store bought, you know, yeah, deodorant. So I, we're I would do this. all of the above that we've just talked okay. about. I want to hear about the we're, deodorant. We're just getting started. Okay. Don't you? Don't you go anywhere. You're listening to Home Wizards, Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole. Keep it here because. All right, so when you continue listening to what you can do to save money and just to know that you are empowered because you know what chemicals may or may not be now going into your body or whatever it is into your home, we're talking about things that you can stop buying and instead make, whether it's a household cleaner or something as simple as toothpaste and even deodorant. 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 There there are some links to deodorant and and, uh, potential cancer-causing agents in the deodorizers, right? The antiperspirants are bad news, apparently. Well, you know, and then you start to wonder, well, if you make it yourself, because I have bought, by the way, you're Eric Stromer. Yes, I am. And I'm Cindy Dole, and this is Home Wizards. But, you and, know, but and by the way, I am wearing deodorant. Thank you. Right now. And thank I am, you. I am, I'm wearing chemical deodorant, but I have tried the non, you know, what's it called? One's called Tom's or something. You get yeah. it like at Trader Joe's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. No. You know, like when you have to give a presentation and you feel like you're nervous. Sure. And you go, this isn't working. Yeah. So anyway. The e- paradigm though is that maybe you got to just, do you remember they used to sell sweat underarm pads? that you would okay. pin into your shirts. You remember those to things? To collect any yeah. perspiration? Yeah. So I, anyway, I'm not I'm not going to... I like the idea of making your own okay. deodorant. And All I'll right. tell you why, because the main ingredient is vodka. Okay. Is it really? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> no. Yes, it is. Is it? Yes. Uh, okay. Well, let's let's talk. Let's t- <laughs> Because, you know, anytime you can get a little nip in the process of manufacturing, <laughs> I'm, I'm, always, I'm always down for that. All right. So the main ingredient is vodka. Yes, it is. But it's not the whole bunch. It's like four tablespoons. Four tablespoons of vodka, some witch hazel, again, four tablespoons, 10 drops of Ylingy Lang, which is actually... What the hell is that? It's an essential Herb? aroma. Oh. Uh, it's actually really y- pretty y- stuff. Ylang Ylang? Ylang Ylang. What the heck is that? That's and then a... 10 dro- drops of geranium, 10 drops of bergamot. 
them on and 10 drops of sandalwood, and then you got yourself a fancy deodorant. So this sounds like we need to go to the health food store, because you're not going to find ylang ylang or whatever the heck no, that is. No, you'd have to get that at a health food store. You have store, to go yeah. to some really yeah, yeah. highfalutin, or maybe not highfalutin, but now, definitely. Now, if, if you don't like that particular fragrance, that's maybe more of a, of a women's mm. fragrance. Mm. You can do the same exact thing, but you're, With musk? you're substituting sandalwood, Ooh. 15 drops of sandalwood, 5 drops of black pepper, 10 drops of cypress, 5 drops of frankincense, and 5 drops of tea tree oil. Now, the thing with tea tree oil, I actually, yeah. I have a nail problem. My, I went and got artificial nails only to find out that I was having a reaction to them. I mean, it started to eat away the glues. Oh, under, and the, oh the adhesives. The, the, the skin and the nails. I mean, now it's it's four weeks into it. It's better now. And so I had to take some antibiotic or steroid, actually, to, to reduce the swelling. And then tea tree oil. See? So tea tree oil is supposed to be a natural dis- disinfectant. So so it must, it must take the stank uh, from a I guess yeah, it does something. You but know? if you want to save money, I would just buy a bottle of pop-off vodka, keep it in the <laughs> breast pocket, and then occasionally take a nip and throw some under the old armpits. What's the matter with that? Well, the miracle between vinegar and vodka, <laughs> yeah. the miracles around the house there of this it is. thing, right? It's just that simple. Okay, so now we've been talking about all the different things that you can that you can make. I mean, yeah. we've got dozens of these things you can make and stop buying. So we talked about ketchup. We talked about toothpaste. And don't you worry, if you're just catching it, we'll put this on the website. But for deodorant, I love the idea of the vodka and the different, the manly or the female sure. scents. What about peanut peanut butter? You've made peanut butter in the store. Yes. Well, I've, I've, made, I've made it in the store because a lot of stores offer, especially these older health food stores back in the you know 90s and stuff. You know, you could go there and you'd see the the big container of peanuts, raw peanuts, uh-huh. and then you just turn on this machine and it you know it's out like would come this goop of peanut oh, yeah. butter that had ground it up. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I don't think it injected any additional oil into it because, it, you know, it already came, but it was freshly ground peanut butter. It was delicious. Well, you can do it at home if you have a Cuisinart. Cuisinart, yeah. yeah. Now, here the, the thing with this is you actually put this in the oven first. You preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Yeah. And, you're, and then... What does that do, you think? Well, you're going to put the... Oh, I guess gently roast them. It kind of gives it more of a, a browning, smoky flavor. Oh, okay. That so you could sense. do it. I mean, it would be more like raw peanut butter sure. versus the toasted peanut butter, right? Yeah, yeah. It's too... To each his own. And so you could get the raw shelled peanuts and just go all raw like how you did, yeah. right, in the Cuisinart. Well, I think they always do them roasted. Okay. Even in the store they were roasted because if they're raw, I don't think they get – they produce as much of that of the oil, oil that you need for some reason. And this recipe even asks that you add a little bit of coconut oil or even peanut oil, like not much, a tablespoon or two, sure. and some sea salt. Now, a little bit of salt, maybe you, do, you know, you I don't want... I love the salt in the peanut butter. Maybe you don't want to have salt, you know, but I love how this recipe doesn't have any sugar in it because so many of the, you know, the jiffies and the skip and all that stuff, yeah. they have, they're, they're, it's almost like frosting in there. So now yeah, this it's is way too sweet, I think. Tons and tons of sugar. So yeah. the idea is you would, you know, you could either get pre-blanched nuts and then you'd skip the boiling step and go right to the roasting. Yep. Um, or otherwise you add the raw peanuts to water and you boil it on the on the cooktop for a little bit. And then you cook it for about 40 minutes to an hour and they're browned. And then you take them out, completely cool them. You remove the skins and, you know, there's a few steps that go into this. You know, it isn't like you're going to make it two minutes. It's going to take you about probably about 40 minutes or so to make. Yeah. I'm thinking on this one, no. I'm going to buy it. Too extensive? Too much. I've been really into other kinds of uh, nut um, Oh, like cashew butters, butter, I love. Like almond butter. Yes, or, that's great, you know, too. So that's, for me, it has less you know, sinful stuff in it. Sure. Um, now, what about making homemade window cleaner and surface uh, disinfectant Well, you spray? know, again, hate to keep dwelling on this vodka, but you and I have talked about this. <laughs> Win- vodka cleans windows very, very well. I sound like a full-on alcoholic. You know? <laughs> Okay, state your name. Yeah, Hi, name Eric. Yeah, I, like to, I like to quote unquote clean windows with vodka. <laughs> no, but it does really work because you know why. You it, really are an enabler, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And your poor kids, no, they seem like they're drinking vodka they soon. They really are. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon out of the gate. But boy, we have clean windows in our home. But seriously, oh though, the vodka, it, it seems to uh, uh, it evaporate eats, quickly. It, it doesn't does. leave streaks. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And it eats away whatever the um, the buildup, the residue That's stuff, right. you know. Yeah. So anyway, window cleaner, you can also put the, the, the vodka to the side. Mm-hmm. It also is really good with this Castile soap and vinegar. Oh, okay. Very simple. White vinegar? Just plain old, yeah, you wouldn't, I don't think you have to worry about the cider vinegar. Just plain old, white, cheap old vinegar you can get in these tubs, yeah. you know. And then in terms of the surface disinfectant, again, 
now some of the fancy companies, you know, like Ajax and Pledge or whatever, because they're catching that we don't want to use as many chemicals. Sure. They're now selling this, and I was a sucker and bought it. It's vinegar. It's a vinegar cleaner. Now they've added some other things to it that are non-chemical, but you can make this on your own. I know. And basically, so you could use juice of a lemon, a, a cup or so of vinegar, and then, and then a cup of water. And then now you've got your magic cleaner that you, you keep in a bottle it? under the sink. Done. They, they've they've employed pr- literally hundreds of thousands of engineers and and c- chemists over the years to create artificial cleaners when you can just use a bottle of white vinegar. And, but, and now they're taking to the and next step. They're to try to, and now they're trying to sell us what we could make on our own too. Yeah. No, come on. All right. How about homemade mouthwash? I, I like that idea too. Now I, I will no vodka. S- no, here. no vodka there. But I, I will say I do like, like I said before. I use the coconut oil uh, every couple of you know couple of times a week, and I put it in there, melt it, and swish it around for a minute or so. Now see, that would be kind of hard for me to stomach. I, I like to cook with coconut oil yeah. or put it in a smoothie, but you you just swirl I just around. Just swirl it around. She, you know, do that whole deal. Okay. And it it kills all the germs and, and and it's gentle. You're a better person than I am. Well, I don't know about better. I just have a cleaner mouth. <laughs> you do. <laughs> yeah. So you could basically do this by um, you could even if you don't want to have the coconut oil, you yeah. can get distilled, filtered, or boiled water, and then you just add some um, peppermint oil. Yeah, that's good. And that's it. And then make the keys to make sure you have a clean, disinfected container that you're going to keep. I the see. the mouthwash in, okay. or you can come up with like an orange spice flavor by adding. I mean, anywhere in the grocery section, you'll see all these different essential oils. They've got every kind of flavor from cinnamon to orange, you know, whatever you like, and sure mix do. it up. Yeah, that's great. I'll, I'll do that one too. That's a good see? idea. Okay, so now let's talk. We're kind of working our way through all the different things we talked about: surface de- disinfectant, your own peanut butter, your own mouthwash. Now, let's take it to the next level. I mean, there's so many things you can do to not have to buy, but instead get laundry detergent. Now, when's the last time you bought a thing of laundry detergent? And it, it easily costs you at least $15. I was just at Costco yesterday. You buy a big jumbo? I bought a big jumbo thing, and it was like 28 bucks. 28 Right. Huge, now, huge thing, amount, but it doesn't, it seems, to me, it seems really expensive for what you get. And they claim that you don't need as much because it's what? It's like super... A super duper. Fo- fortified or whatever. Yeah. But how about making your own powdered detergent? See, I would do this. Yeah. So what is it? What, okay. what are the ingredients? So the idea is, and what I, I love is that now you could get some of these mason jars and you could have like a big tub of this powdered detergent that you're going to make and store yeah. it like somewhere in the back, but then just have what you need on your weekly basis in a smaller container and it's all labeled and it's great. And this is a really easy recipe of things you may have. Arm and Hammer baking soda, okay. OxyClean, uh, some of that Fells uh, naphtha stuff. Oh, sure. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Um, super shining um, Arm and Hammer soda and then borax. And then you put all this in the food processor and it basically comes out, it's basically everything it's, that you would find anyway in a store-bought, like, powdered um, cleaner, cleaner for All your right. washing. Okay, I might do say. this one. Okay. So anyway, yep. I think we should talk about a few more of these because right. we still have Let's a bunch go. more There's to share. Do, you know? yeah. Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole, what we have next, we're going to talk about more things that you can make instead of buy. If not laundry detergent, well, of course you can make your custom spice. How about your own, like, kind of chocolate chipotle? Why not? Let's that and more coming up next. You're listening to Home Wizards, where we love to improve your Is there your vodka home. in that one? There's no vodka. <laughs> and we love to improve your, your life. Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Hey, Dole. I'm Eric Stroman. And we love to improve your home and improve your life. And that just might mean not only doing something yourself... But saving money, being healthier, truly improving your life because we've now found and are sharing with you a bunch of great things that you could just make around the house and instead of having to buy them in a bottle. Now you have them. For instance, we've talked about making your own ketchup, making your own deodorant, your own mouthwash, toothpaste, um, home cleaner, laundry detergent. But now... Homemade spice blends. Have you been to the spice section lately in the grocery store? It is unreal how much for a little teeny tiny bottle. Yeah, you're right. It's crazy. And you're like, let's say you wanted some great curry or even I know all the different salts that you love. You like the Himalayan salts and all these interesting salts from around the world. I mean, it's like at least a little teeny tiny vial and a 
saffron. Yeah, Th- Speaking it. of five, that's, that's like twenty dollars for know. a cup of flex. And by the way, it doesn't last that long. Mm. So you know, so you might you, you got to buy it more often than you think because it loses its you know pungent true aspect right? because spices don't last forever no. i mean love may last forever but spices love will keep us together <laughs> so um the the key to this and making your own blends because i really love blends i mean like your own like italian blend sure. and then now it could be eric's family italian blend. well yeah because then you don't have to pull out five different you don't have to pull out the oregano and the basil right. and it's, you know, all it's all together how fun it's a yeah. great family project the key is and you, you can create your own balance so that you know yes. you're not too heavy with one or the other you got to play around a you, you're going to buy them in bulk yeah. you need to buy them you, you can go to different stores um, where they sell spices in bulk that's the key that's the key to saving money because yeah. otherwise now you're buying you're a victim you know, a slave to the to the to the grocery stores who sure. are si- you know selling you like these little teeny tiny bottles so now instead you're going to get bottles whatever you like you can get mason jars you can buy i went online for our little spice drawer and you can get those spice bottles all glass with the lids and then you use your label maker and it's very inexpensive and now you know and then in a, in a cupboard somewhere or in your pantry you've got the bigger batch that you just kind of refill the smaller right, bottles right. but you're going to buy in bulk all the different main ingredients like Chipotle, cumin, garlic, oregano, paprika, sea salt, whatever the heck, curry, you name it, rosemary, all these different must-have ingredients. It's probably initially going to cost you a little bit because you're probably going to want to buy, I would say, at least 20 different kinds of flavors, whatever you know type that you love. You could come up with, let's say you love Mexican food or you like Italian food or maybe you like all of it, Indian. And then you'd have your blends, your big stash in the back and your individual bottles, and you are done. By label. the way, that's not a bad gift idea either. Great gift, because right? now you're making some for yourself. That's it. And you, can you can make Cindy's some for your mom. famous uh, taco blend. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah, it's easy. And I mean, because again, when you go to these these stores and they're selling the taco blend, and you look on the ingredients, you go, "Wait a minute, I could have made that." What's malodextrin? You know, you say, <laughs> well, you, know, you that read too. all that stuff, and all like, those what the heck things. is this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So now you don't need to worry about that, and you can also customize it to your own family. Favorites. And good tradition. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that you should be making if you haven't thought of doing this yet, and that is making your own candles. Now, I know it might sound like a bit of a chore, but it really isn't. Have you ever made your own candle? I have done a little candle making. You have? Yeah. Back How in the it 70s, work? it was really fancy and fun. Really? To do that. Yeah. With a class was, or something? Yeah, or? class. And then parents would do it wearing, you know, while they were wearing their, te- their tie dye shirts and <laughs> smelling like patchouli oil. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of the hippie parents were into it. But yeah, you you just take you just melt different colors of wax and dip dip the wick in and pull it out. It dries. You dip it more and keep doing it over and over and layer it and swirl it with different colors of wax and it's actually really cool, and fun thing to do. Okay, well, yeah. and and you can get the supplies by the way um, at the arts and craft stores, the Michaels of the world. They have it's such a big thing. There's a whole aisle on all the candle ingredients that you need. You know, from the soy, you can get soy wax too. Yeah, you know? that's a good idea. Um, or you can get bee wax or whatever. How do they, what, are they, what do you mean soy? Wa- There's actually soy wax. There's actually soy wax that some people prefer. Huh. Um, you know, and then you want to make sure that you have your containers. I mean, again, you could start with the mason jars, um, or you can even use recycle, you know, glass jars that you have from your marinara sauce to sure, that's a good baby idea. jars yeah. to whatever, just use and use up anything. Um, you can use a hot burner, but you can also just use a stove top too. But a, a hot burner is going to come in handy when you're not making candles in the kitchen, or if you'd like to keep the wax hot right wa- where you are working. You need a pouring pitcher, and then you need these wick bars, and this is going to hold the wick in place as the wax cools, right? Right. Yeah, um, that's to have the container candles, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. The way I was talking about it was, oh, the you know, solid, you're, you're actually creating your own shape. The pillar itself. Exactly. I see. Exactly, I yeah. see. Well, yeah. go, you can go either way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and by the way, if you do go the candle route, you can go thrift shop for glass containers. The only thing is that when the containers get on the smaller side, at when they're smaller at the top, then at the bottom, the wax hardens with holes and gaps. So heads up, it might be a good idea to have it even, a nice, like a tub. Yeah, and if there are holes, then it'll sometimes extinguish the flame uh-huh. when it melts a section. Right. And there's a little air pocket in there, and then wax kind of pours it in over the wick. That's so kind of a bummer. you definitely want to be careful, yeah. And then you'd be, you, know, you could be thinking of fragrance. Now, here's the other thing. When you buy store-bought candles, have you noticed it's kind of like perfume or... 
you know. It's a little pungent sometimes. It's a little phony. It yeah. kind of s- smells like, you know, frosting. Yeah. And it's a little, t- you know, it's almost like you're in the elevator with like that. Like one of those Glade air fresheners. So, I was something. in the theater the other night and somebody, I think it was a man who was wearing some kind of cologne and it was so strong. It was like, whoa, it really kind of... Um, it kind of ruined my experience in the theater, and I sat there for two hours smelling this really strong. Yeah, sometimes thing. I've actually choked in elevators when people oh. get in with certain fragrances. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, an elevator, at least you're in and you're out, but now yeah. you're in a theater and you're like you're hunkered down. <laughs> you're kind of stuck. It's terrible. You know. So, but anyway, to each his own in terms of fragrance, because fragrance is so personal. But you could use cinnamon or blue spruce or whatever you like. And now you know you can get, you can get botanical oils. But that's the fun part is to make it um, as you love, as your personal favorites. It's a great idea. Now, what about natural sunscreen? Well, this, I think, is a fantastic idea because here's the... I have a, I have a friend who owns a natural skincare line called Herba Viva, and they're all over Europe and stuff, and they use natural ingredients, but... Which is so popular, right? Su- sunscreen that, they're, that they use now, like the American versions of Neutrogena and all that stuff, they've got micronized par- particulates that actually can go through the skin transdermally. Yeah. So sunscreen is basically just going into your bloodstream. It's not a great thing to use all the time when you're using the conventional stuff. He swears by zinc oxide. It's the most natural, best, most effective sunscreen out there. It's just tough to spread around sometimes. Zinc right? oxide. Well, that's like yeah. the surfer look. You know, it's like, <clears throat> yes. oh, love the nose. Yeah, I got the white <laughs> nose, right? But <clears throat> to make your own sunscreen, it's actually pretty easy using almond oil, which in itself has a sun protect, an SPF of five. Coconut oil, which has a SPF of four to six. Zinc oxide goes from two to 20, depending on how much you use. And then you're using your oils, like red raspberry seed oil is 25 to 50 SPF. Ooh. Carrot seed oil is 35 to 40 SPF. Shea butter oh, which is, is so four creamy. to six uh, SPF. So, so oh. right there, you've got a really effective sunscreen. It's not huh. micronized. It's not going to go into your body. It's just so going to sit you on top. You mix all this together. You mix together. all it up, yeah. So mix now you've got almost 100 SPF. You've got plenty, and you're not, you know, you're you can rest assured that the stuff's not going in your body, which I think is something that we often overlook. I, I'll, over over time, I don't think it's a good deal. Mm-hmm. You know, but it is important to have sunscreen. Oh, and there's sunblock, no question. Take know? a look at my hash brown forearms. Then it's, you'll know why. It's really a big deal. So yeah, I tell um, you, my kids said to Daddy, it "Looks like you have hash brown forearms." Are they still saying that? It's, well, this was a couple of years ago. No, you're. I think the look. I don't they, see. They, hash they are browns. spotty. They're spotty. Well, they don't get to have breakfast. No. <laughs> Boy, they don't treat They'll, you right well, sometimes. <clears throat> that's how they are. Uh, what are do? Well, what about making your own um, bath salt? I mean, this could be something that's also uh, healthy. It's yep. a great holiday gift or gift and throughout the year. And it, how talk about therapeutic and spa-like, right? And all it takes is a handful of Epsom salts which is so healing and so great. And you can buy that, you know, by bulk, a big you know, hunkin' box of Epsom salts, and right. all you need is maybe a cup or two, and you put this in a mason jar, and a few drops of your favorite essential oil, and and now you have basically aromatherapy in a That's jar. That's pretty great, yeah. Yeah, and you could do everything. I like the I like the Epsom salts. They they make you feel good. They do. They really help. They're very healthy. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's done a lot. To, it kind of like sucks out the impurities. And by the way, to your point, these these are... Relatively expensive compared to how you can buy them on your own and mix these different, you know, essential oils into them. Because, you know, you, you, you get traditional bath salts that have no fragrance. They're a lot less expensive. You start throwing fragrance in it by some manufacturer, all of a sudden you're up to 10 15 20 bucks a bag, right? I know. So this is a really economical way to do it. It's economical, and plus you're going to go, you know what? I just feel like I am so... Special. That's I made it. it. Yeah. I did it myself. Yeah, you did. Right? So when we come back, we have some more things to talk about, things that you can be doing to get your garden to grow. Wait to hear about this. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, you're listening to Home Wizards. I love 